Hey everyone, uh, Derek Weeks here. I'm the VP and DevOps advocate at Sonatype. Um, happy to be uh, online with you this morning, and we're going to give an update on the Struts 2 vulnerability that was just announced on September 5th, and some of what your organization um, should be thinking about. If you're not aware of this vulnerability, we'll provide some links to the news. Um, and to our latest blog post uh, on the vulnerability so that you can uh, update yourselves and update your team uh, about what you should know about this latest struts to uh, vulnerability. Um, joining me here this morning is uh, one of our friends from the DevSecOps community, um, Riaz Walliker. He's from uh, AppSeco, where he is the chief offensive security officer uh, for them. So he's going to give us some perspectives on how he's working with clients and talking to them um, not only about this Struts 2 vulnerability, but about um, known vulnerabilities or zero days that come up with uh, within different environments. So uh, why don't we get started? Uh, the, uh, the Struts 2 vulnerability announced September 5th. This is a uh, a major vulnerability uh, that was announced in Struts having to deal with some deserialization issues. Um, I also understand from our team at Sonatype this morning that a new uh, Struts vulnerability was also announced this morning. Um, so we have some more data coming on that throughout the day. So definitely stay tuned to Sonatype's blog um, you know, on that, uh, on that topic. Um, you know, Riaz, when you heard about this latest Struts 2 vulnerability, um, as a chief, uh, chief offensive security officer and working with your clients, what were your first thoughts about actions that, that had to take place either at AppSeco or with your clients? So, uh, uh, thank you, Derek. Um, one of the first things that uh, came out, I was not at home. Uh, I was not in the office either. I was at a client location when uh, I got news of this. And uh, one of the first things was to get back, test this out in our lab and uh, let our clients know that there is something out there uh, that could uh, possibly compromise their data and systems. And this vulnerability, like uh, the previous Struts uh, vulnerability itself, uh, although that was not a serialization issue, uh, this one clearly uh, leads to a remote code execution. Uh, what this means is that an attacker can send a malicious uh, XML payload uh, to your uh, Struts2 application. And uh, the server is going to deserialize the data. And while it is deserializing the data, uh, you can pass your own uh, class uh, to execute code that you would want on the server. right? And uh, already attackers uh, have started using exploit code on the internet to search for vulnerable systems. So in the next couple of days, you're going to hear a lot about systems being compromised uh, in different places. And uh, Metasploit came out in the module. Uh, it's available on GitHub. You can. Uh, you know, put that in the uh, Metasploit console itself. That gives uh, a lot of people who have access to the Metasploit framework to go test this out directly instead of understanding what's happening with the vulnerability uh, test. Apache folks have uh, released the uh, patch for this, and uh, if you uh, see that you're vulnerable, please upgrade your uh, struts uh, to version 2.5.13. Uh, that's already available from the website. Uh, the the major, uh, this is obviously a, uh, the, the criticality rating is uh, severe because the uh, exploit clearly, the code clearly allows you to execute code on the server, right? And uh, that is the worst kind of uh, security issue that uh, attackers can use on a system. Like the ability to execute commands on your server is, is a pretty, uh, is the worst thing that could happen apart from the data loss that uh, would come as uh, a derivative of this. And uh, as as uh, it goes, uh, the recommendation that we've already given out to our clients is to uh, test the patch uh, on a staging or testing environment and uh, uh, push it out to production. And uh, as part of uh, the offensive side, uh, going ahead when we have client engagements, one of the first things that we're going to look on uh, as part of the arsenal, we've already added this to our uh, set of exploits where we are going to be testing this against a client infrastructure and their apps. Uh, this is definitely going to be one of the uh, primary things we're going to test if uh, exploits to application is discovered. Um, to, to the idea of how you can minimize damage, because um, as I was talking to uh, somebody else today, uh, the idea that the applications are going to be vulnerable, the frameworks are going to be vulnerable, it, it, vulnerability is lying in wait to be discovered because 
you cannot create code that is 100% secure right uh, based on the changes on the configuration or the system itself or the framework over a period of updates uh, the system is going to become vulnerable the vulnerabilities once they are discovered become zero days and then uh, unless full disclosure or sorry or rather uh, unless uh, the vendor first deploys a patch uh, people who have these applications listening on the internet are going to be vulnerable right the uh, the the primary thing that can help and this is again uh, an old school way of looking at things but definitely does help in uh, today's uh, infra systems as well is that you deploy uh, your applications and the server should be running with uh, these privileges right and uh, so because even though we accept the risk that uh, the vulnerability is going to be exploited and the attacker is going to gain access to the system uh, what the attacker will be able to do beyond that is uh, is completely not control you harden the os you harden the uh, server itself and uh, then be prepared for an attack um apart from that uh, if you are able to uh, over the next couple of days i would advise people who have starts to applications running to monitor their logs closely to see if uh, there's any scams coming out and people trying to attack right and uh, any unwanted processes outbound connections especially if somebody is trying to use your system to connect back to their servers this is something that you should definitely look at Uh, preventing outbound uh, connections to uh, coming out from a system should definitely be uh, on top of your checks. Yeah, I, I think yeah. The clear thing in these vulnerabilities when the zero days are, are announced. You know, when when we talk to to our clients and and the market at large of application security professionals or, or DevOps teams that are looking to build quality into their applications as you know as early as possible. The the first thing. Yeah, that we talk to our our clients about. It, well, there's kind of three things that they need to know. One is, you know, are you using uh, Struts two? You you know, it's it's a big enough web application framework. Most people aren't. Uh, you know, uh, it, it is. It's not a mystery if Struts two is in their environment. They base a, yeah. a, a lot of their their platform um, that they've developed on this uh, on this framework. Um, but are they using the vulnerable versions of Struts two out there? In this case. Uh, I believe I've read that it's every version of Struts 2 since 2008. Uh, yes. So if, if you're using Struts 2, you're likely using the vulnerable versions. Um, if you are, where are you using uh, that particular uh, uh, framework throughout your environment, and um, and what's the remediation path? So as you already mentioned, uh, Apache yesterday, or or maybe it was September 5th, um, yes, yeah. introduced that new Uh, version of Struts 2 that has the vulnerability fixed in it, um, so people have to download that and uh, update their uh, their applications with that new version, um, so yes. that they're not susceptible to attack. But it's really that you know, are we using this particular component? Um, if so, where is it? Um, and then what's our remediation path? So um, Sonatype was able to update its customers yesterday. Uh, you know, based on the news, all of them that are using the uh, automated uh, uh, solutions that we have um, with the component intelligence across their environment, they knew immediately where they were using this uh, component in development, where it existed in production applications, and what the the uh, remediation path was with the new version um, that that was available. I think. You know, when we talk about the seriousness of this uh, particular vulnerability out there in the market, uh, I remember back in March of this year when the the last major Struts vulnerability was announced. We saw downtime at Japan Post, uh, Okinawa yeah. Power in Japan was also out. Uh, the yeah. Canadian Statistics Office and Canadian Tax Office were down. I think we also saw some uh, downtime at the IRS uh, in the the United States, um, mm -hmm. and that vulnerability was not is uh, it was a little trickier than this one, or, or maybe the the um, particular exploit was a little harder to get at. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in that case, this one is relatively easy, so the the severity is much higher um, with this particular uh, vulnerability. So. Um, you know, I've already reached out to to friends of mine in the financial services industry, and you know, made them aware. Uh, and I've gotten notes back the, this morning uh, from some of those friends saying, you know, we already knew about this. We're you know, 
uh, you know, thanks for the link, but we're we're ahead of you. We've already checked out our systems, you know, which are vulnerable and, and which aren't. Um, and, and I think that that you know, that it's interesting, you know, that, to get that reaction from people. Whereas, you know, in some cases where you looked at things like the Open SSL vulnerability that everyone talks about, Heartbleed. You know, mm-hmm. most organizations, when that happened a couple of years ago, were spending a couple of weeks to a month to actually go out on a scavenger hunt and look for yeah. this particular, uh, you know, uh, vulnerable component within their infrastructure. Uh, mm-hmm. Just to identify it took a matter of weeks for many organizations. And yet, with DevOps practices and the tracking of components early in development, and the use of a software bill of materials uh, for tracking components in, in organizations, you're seeing the reaction times much faster. You know, faster yeah. very, very large financial services organizations with you know many different branches uh, you know around the world or, or IT groups and development groups that they're working with. Um, you know to be able to to come back to me and say. You know, within a couple of hours, we know what systems are out there. Uh, we know what systems are impacted. We're not impacted, or we, you know, we have our prioritization plan. You know, all set for this. This is more of a, I, I think, the common response in the industry right now that there's more preparedness. There's more, um, you know, planning up front for when a zero day happens. How quickly do we know about these things? Um, and, and I think that. Um, you know, I know there are still some organizations out there searching, you know, their systems uh, mm-hmm. manually, uh, but I think the, the practices are uh, becoming more prevalent of those that know the components that they're using in their systems and, yeah. uh, and understanding how to react fastest. Yeah. So are you seeing the same thing with your clients in, uh, in India and, and um the UK and, and other places around the world that uh, their reaction times are, are similar to these kind of vulnerabilities as they're coming out? Yeah, we, uh, we spoke to uh, a couple of them and uh, it does look like the reaction time is faster than the previous March start of vulnerability. Right? And uh, there was, uh, the patch was released and then the mention of uh, the vulnerability came out. I think that also uh, aided in the whole uh, uh, we are secure first, and then the attackers are going to take a look at this because uh, the exploit code was not uh, released by the folks who discovered the vulnerability, and uh, it was kind of reverse engineered based on the patch that was there, right? Right. and uh, based on the previous right. version, right? and uh, the new patched version. So uh, I think uh, that also helped. Uh, but apart from that, uh, most uh, of the clients uh, incorporating uh, automated uh, you know, itinerary of uh, rather the the whole uh, uh, listing of all the uh, you know, uh, what applications they have running in their environment and all of that was available to them, right? And all they do is just go back to the server that they knew would be vulnerable and go fix that. Right? So that that kind of definitely helped. Yeah. Well, hey Riaz, uh, I don't want to keep you too long this uh, this evening, uh, your time, this morning my time, uh, but I really appreciate you uh, getting on this uh, this chat with me and sharing some information about what you know about this vulnerability. Um, we'll definitely provide uh, links out to the blog uh, I just published last night uh, to tell folks a little more about this if you're unaware of it. Uh, and Sonetype also has a free service to analyze your application for the open source components that are in it uh, to help you create a software bill of materials. So we'll make sure to post that uh, under this link as well so that people can get a hold of that. Uh, Riaz, thank you again. Uh, Have a good evening, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Nice talking to you.